My name is Georg Rewe. I am Chair and Head of Product Development at Verain. As Asimov taught us, any sufficiently advanced technology should be indistinguishable from magic. Verain set out to sufficiently advance self-sovereign identity and the blessings of cryptography to make them magic. Our open source magic enables a global community of trust which offers recognition, credit and protection to all its participants. This community gets seeded from email as the identity database and viral distribution channel. Email is already where all our digital identities come together. It unites 4 billion people in a peer-to-peer -peer network that is not controlled by a single platform provider. It is the only universal channel and medium of choice for important information, for communication that has value, especially for professional users and businesses. The largest email platform is Gmail with 1.7 billion accounts and most of them use the web client in Google Chrome. What better place to start? To show the prototype, I will use a demo instance with made up data using Elon Musk and Gennaro Matti as personas. Apologies to both. So, our story begins in Gmail using Google Chrome as the browser. This is a completely normal Gmail account. There's nothing special about it, it should look exactly like yours. It has three mails. We're going to open the first one. And so we see this is a message from Elon Musk, who looks like Steve Jobs, and goes, Dear Ginny, please find and close the investment proposal and term sheet. It goes on to explain a little bit about Verain, but the paragraph that I'm most interested in is the next. I've already sent this via the new Verain service, which means this offer is legally binding and already signed by myself with qualified electronic signature including a permanent record on the blockchain that allows to prove it is really from me and was sent in exactly this form. There's a lot in that paragraph. Firstly, this message obviously carries proof of identity. It carries a proof of who is actually the person that sent it. Secondly, the signature on this email is apparently done in a way to meet the legal requirements for a qualified electronic signature, meaning a signature that is electronic, that is legally equivalent to a paper signature done with a ballpoint pen. And this message also carries a permanent record on the blockchain. It has an audit trail that proves all these things and proves them for eternity. That means this message carries an audit trail that says who it is from, when it was sent, what was sent, and in fact, if the recipient also has Verain, even when it was received and by whom. That is completely unique. If you have a registered mail service based in the real world, then you have at best, proof that someone sent an envelope to another recipient and that someone on the other side signed it, although whether it is really the intended recipient is not entirely clear all the time. So you can think of this as registered mail 3.0 in that regard only with all the benefits of email seamlessly integrated into email. Mail goes on to say, if the terms are okay, you can countersign by responding via Verain or highlight the terms we need to revisit, to, so we only need to reconfirm the open points. And it also goes to go a little bit into the future use cases for this, because of course you can now think of sending email in cases where so far you're not allowed to use it. KYC is a jargon word from the banking world, which means know your customer, so know who is on the other side, know who you are interacting with, make sure you're talking to the right person. And that's exactly the problem that you face with medical information, legal information, banking information. You need to make sure it reaches the right party. 
Email traditionally has not been able to do that, which is why it could not be used for these purposes. Verain enabled these kind of use cases on email because we can now say this message must be read by this person and I must have that person certified, verified to a certain standard. And then, of course, also the ability to use email as a medium, not only for coordination, but also for implementation of smart contracts and transactions. Because the blockchain audit trail that I've been mentioning is based on a blockchain, right? Obviously, but it also has a smart contract. That means the sender of the message offers the recipient of the message credits for their read notification. Those credits are implemented as some form of token on the chain. Therefore, we now have a way to transact tokens over email. And if we can do that for one token, we can do it for all of them. That is not currently implemented, but this is a very clear next step for the system. The message at top here invites us to verify all these things. You are invited to verify my credentials at Verain, join my trusted network and sign up to the better version to start your own. Now, Ginny in this case says, oh, that is very interesting. I would very much like to know that this message is real and the person behind it is real. So I would usually now click on start your own, given that this is actually pointing to the live prototype and this is all set up in a demo instance, I will take a slight detour here and go through this link. The sign up process is still the same though. This is how the sign up process looks like. I'm entering my personal phone number here because we need one, as you will see. That very light ding that you heard is the text message with the code arriving. I enter the code and now I need to quickly enter my... Oh. I hit confirm and I need to agree to the terms. And that was it. That was everything I had to do. There was a very um, slight second thing in case you heard it, um, which says, welcome to the rain. You now have an identity. And in fact, I already have my identity. All I need to do here is quickly enter my pin code that I choose to to encrypt the access on this device. I skip the tour for now because we're in a demo anyway. And that's it. You are in your dashboard here. This is your Varane dashboard. You have a full identity. That is everything it took. It's literally a couple of seconds and you're in there because for us, we wanted to make it so simple to use that it does feel like magic. It needs to become seamless, which is why we made it that simple. Now we have an identity here and you see this contains all the data we have entered so far. We see that the phone number is validated because we validated it over the, over the code. The email address is not yet validated. So I can say, all right, I want to do that. I request a code. I go back into my inbox. I see I've received the code. And it's done. Now you see my email address is also validated. You can of course add any kind of personal information, any kind of identity information about yourself here. I mean, we have a couple of things in the prototype, including a social media link and things like that, date of birth, addresses, and so on. But ultimately, this can then represent all of your identity, including passports, um, passport numbers, 
bank accounts, whatever you want. I mean, any kind of relevant information that you might want to keep and share with others that you, you might want to have available in a validated fashion because not visible in this prototype right now, you can then also, in the same way that I've now had automated um, validation for phone number and email address, you can add validation for the various individual properties of your identity. So you can read in your electronic ID card or your um, passport. You can use um, providers for these purposes, which are often country to country. Some of them are global. They're usually allowed or, uh, or licensed to do up to certain levels of identity assurance. And so you can use various of them. Um, for the startups, we're gonna go with reading out your passport and, and, and ID card, as well as using the uh, Swiss ID um, done by Swiss sign. And then you have here, you are hardened real identity with verification of third parties, which means if you now wanted to use this towards someone else, you could prove to them that you really are you because there's a signature on this. When we started this, the inbox was empty, right? And that was because the email was not yet verified. But you see, actually, now that we've verified it, we already see the messages we received and we see that we can actually have them here as part of a ongoing eternal record of what we have done with our identity. Because that's another very, very important part. You want to know what you have done online, especially if you're doing this in a form that is legally binding, you want to have a record that can allow you in future to prove what you have or have not done. But having an identity, of course, is one thing. Being able to use it is quite another. And for that, there's a big problem because you see, you don't want to tell everyone everything about you all the time for any kind of interaction. You want to be in control of what you can actually share with someone else. And for exactly that purpose, we have come up with the concept of passports. You see that there's already three passports here. The system creates three by default for different purposes. Um, so you don't have to be an expert in passport management when you set up the rain, but ultimately you can add any number of passports down here. So you can create as many as you want and you can then edit them as well. So for instance, this one, my email passport has my email address, my name. I can also add the phone number like this. It is really extremely simple to do so. A passport is like a window into your identity a window that only shows what you want to show, that only shows to the other side as part of a transaction what you were willing to share with them. In fact, you can then also add zero knowledge proof obfuscation to passports. So you can say, this passport contains that I am really a human being and I live in Switzerland, but it does not contain my address or um, my birth date or something. I can prove my age without revealing when exactly I was born. That is what zero knowledge proof can be used for and passports allow to very naturally model that in because you would create passports for types of interactions. If you have a banking passport and a friend's passport and one for social media and one for your work perhaps, then all these passports can be different and can represent only the parts of you that are relevant for the context. Passports allow you to define context. The last step we have to do is we have to pull down the plugin. You see there's a Chrome plugin for my Gmail. I can click on that, it's already in the store. You can now um, add this to, to your Chrome. I've already installed it, so I'm not gonna click this button. That's the only step I'm gonna skip here but um, you're very invited to actually do that for yourself. Because now if we go back into our inbox and we click on the little Varane icon, you see that it actually realized, oh, there's a Varane identity in the local browser cache. I can now add you Varane capabilities to your Gmail. 
So you unlock the key with your pin that you've chosen during sign up and voila, you're in. That is really everything you had to do. Now you have your little Varain bar up here and the Varain bar is very, very simple on purpose. You see it should shows me which passport I have chosen, so which identity view I am working with, which transactional context I am in. And it shows me the, the rain bar is active. That's everything it does. That's everything I need because from now on, every message while this is active is automatically going to be varained. So I can go in here. Um, I can say, oh, that's... Um, I can confirm this, say yes, I'm interested. And you see, Gmail works the exact same way, right? I mean, the only difference is that down here, I have a little visualization that tells me the rain is enabled, but now I can just click on this. I can say, yes, I'm interested. I can respond. And that's really everything I have to do. Um, I can now use Gmail as I am normally using it. I do not need to change my habits. I need to not need to do anything different. And that is extremely important for us. We wanted to build something that allows users to keep their habits, to work in the way that they have always worked and the way that they like to work, because that is the only way to, to really truly reach that point where it becomes magic. In fact, if I now go back into the Me Inbox, for instance, here, um, here, this is this one. I can see that Here's my message again with the yes, I'm interested. You see this is all nicely signed and, and, and confirmed and hardened. Now, I've received this other message from Peter Test, who apparently is asking me for help. And of course, I'm not very familiar with the rain. So um, Peter is saying, oh, dear Ginny, please, apologies for turning to you. I know that you are more knowledgeable at this. I believe my wife and I may have been hacked. There was this mail that looked like it came from my wife. So I opened the attachment, but she said that she never sent it, has no idea where it came from. Now my wife is really scared. She's devastated that someone might have gotten the pictures of the kids when they were really still young. And we have no idea whether they also got access to our accounting. We try to follow all these tips, but we really have no idea what else may have been compromised. And it seems we may never know. We spend days to change all the credentials, yet have no idea what is necessary, whether it will solve the issue or whether it's already too late. And this is all very, very real. Um, most people don't like to talk about this, but it has happened to more people than um, one would care to admit or, or, or realize. Um, and the invasion into your digital life is quite as real as an invasion into your personal space, like physically at home. Um, when you find your apartment um, torn up and someone went through everything and your underwear and whatever, um, your pictures, your desk, um, there is a feeling of violation that is very real. In fact, I've seen it from people who've been telling me about their own experiences in, in this field. And the other part is that with the traditional identities and systems and virtually every single password that you have is a key, a secret to an identity that lives somewhere that represents you to some extent, that contains you. And digital is just as real as physical. There's no difference for us these days anymore. The digital world is very, very real. So every one of these passwords, when it gets stolen, it can be stolen on any device, it can be stolen anywhere um, on a server. Um, usually people reuse them, even though they know they shouldn't, but who in their right mind could actually make up 191, that's the average number of passwords a business user is dealing with, 191 unique strong passwords and actually remember them. Um, and then, yes, you have password managers and other things to work around this. But frankly, they are not good because they all put a single point of failure into the system. If you have a password manager, that's better than having bad passwords. But 
It also means that all your passwords can now be stolen in a single place. If that place gets compromised, you are screwed. And it doesn't fix the fundamental problem that with traditional systems, you have no idea what actually happened in them. You have no way of telling. You don't know when your password is compromised normally. And you don't know what that person has done. So Ginny is now gonna, gonna respond. And I'm just gonna grab that from here. So, dear Peter, you should both consider signing up for Varane. There are no passwords to compromise because everything works on key-based authentication, which is far more user-friendly and secure. It will also help you secure everything you do online. And here comes the most important part. Varane is the only solution that creates your personal black box for your devices and Varane passports. So Varane will not only make it harder for you to get compromised again, if it happens, you'll have temper-proof evidence secured by blockchain about where and what, and it will be far easier for you to recover the integrity of your digital self. And of course, we're gonna send this Varane right away. Understanding that there is an audit trail, a black box behind this for every user is very, very important. Every device interaction, adding a new device, removing a device, a signature you do leaves a record for the user on the blockchain, which means the user can now go and verify what has been done in their name. And if they did not do something, they can actually go in and say, wait a minute, that wasn't me. I did not do that. And that allows you to recover from these kind of things because you notice them in time to still do something about them, not too late. And we're quickly gonna switch over to Thunderbird here because that is what Peter is using. Now we are Peter and we receive Ginny's mail. In fact, you now see again, Ginny is inviting him to, to actually verify her credentials at Varane and sign up there. But what I wanted to show you here, because this is a regular Thunderbird, there's nothing modified about it, is that legacy clients can still work with the messages that Varane sends because I have deliberately avoided to talk about email signature and cryptography up to this point. What you see here is the symbol that Thunderbird uses to show this message is correctly validly signed. And we're quickly gonna look at this. I don't wanna get too technical but just to give you an idea. So we can open this and we can see here that this whole thing has been signed. And in fact, you see a, a hierarchy of keys here. It starts at this point with the key of the certificate on the server that we're using for the demo instance. But of course the chain can be longer. There can be third party CA signing this. You can have cross signing with other instances and, and um, institutions, all of that you can do. But what is important here is that you have a server-side certificate, and that is the server-side certificate of your passport. You have a user device, that is the passport certificate on the device, in this case, the browser from which I sent the message, and you have a one-time certificate. Now, the passport certificates, like all certificates, including the authentication certificates that we're using for the key-based authentication, are all generated on the local device, which means they never get shared with a server. They never need to be synchronized with another device. So they can only ever be stolen in the device on which they are, and when that key does things that the system does not consider legitimate because the user says, wait a minute, that wasn't me, it is easy to revoke a single device. Plus, this way of setting up the keys allows us, because no passport is using the same keys on two different devices, and no two passports are using the same keys, it allows us to protect the users from being able to somehow data mine for what they have done over multiple passports. It makes it very, very difficult. So, we generate keys all the time. In fact, we generate even transaction keys which means that this message has been signed with a one-time key that will only ever be used for that one message and never again. And because there is a record of it in the black box, in the audit trail, 
then we can also later say that if that key got stolen for whatever reason, because the platform was compromised and someone tries to reuse the key to do something else, the user can now say, wait a minute, I generated that key for this legitimate purpose, that was me, it was stolen there apparently, and now used for something else, but I can prove that this was not me. The system allows you to do that. It proves, allows you to prove that you didn't do something which is completely new. We haven't been able to do anything like this before. So these are S-MIME, as the standard is called, signed messages. But when we go back to Ginny, you will have realized that we haven't seen keys, we haven't touched keys, we haven't done anything with keys. All we've done is we've had a 20 second sign up, we've confirmed an email address, and we set up a couple of passports. In fact, they were already set up for us. We haven't touched keys, so where are they coming from? The passports are attached um, to the keys, or the other way around, whichever way you want to look at it. And passport selection becomes an implicit key selection. It makes sure that you can implicitly select keys so the user never has to deal with them. Because all the attempts so far in the past to deal with this always try to educate people into becoming cryptography experts on some level. That does not work. The adoption numbers clearly show it does not work, which is why people don't use cryptography, which is why they are all worse off. That's not a good thing. We need to make this more usable. And that's exactly what we did here. Every mail I've sent here was an S mime signed mail. You have never before sent S mime mails this easily. But it doesn't end here. In fact, we got another message here from from Elon, and um, you see that actually now for the for the second and consecutive messages, the system switches to this kind of ID card underneath that shows you who you're interacting with. You see. Um, name, email, mobile number, even a social, like a Twitter account here for, for Elon um, that he has shared with you. And this is the data that Elon put in his passport that he was using for the interaction with Ginny. So you can choose what appears there by saying, these are the things I want to share for this kind of transaction. And so, of course, little invite again. But the important part is, Dear Genie, also could you please sign the contract I placed into our Nextcloud instance at demo collabora I'm going to click on that. This is a Nextcloud um, with a couple of things in there. I'm just going to go into the contract here. That This is LibreOffice Online. So LibreOffice exists um, as the number two Office application in the world, really, after Microsoft Office on virtually all desktops, as well as in the web. This is the web version. So you see I have a contract here with some very important things which I want to digitally sign. So I go in here, I say sign document. LibreOffice realizes that I have a rain identity in the browser again. I mean, again, the identity, the keys never leave the browser. They are stored in the browser. The application, the dashboard that you're seeing runs in the browser. Um, the key is always local. And now I have a rain bar, which looks similar to the one in Gmail for my LibreOffice online. And I can just select my passport again, same passports. I can say, I want to sign this and say, I want to turn this into a PDF. And here we go. We have just done a qualified electronic signature with a verified hardened identity that is self-sovereign under control of the user. And if, I mean, if we go, for instance, here back, we see that now we have the contract here in the dashboard as well. So we can add more interaction types, we can add um, more um, depth to this, but I think the purpose of this becomes very, very clear already. It makes digital identity, it makes self-sovereign identity, it makes a digital self suddenly easy to use and obvious to the user. Because some of the biggest breakthroughs seem obvious in hindsight. But what you have really seen here, what you have experienced, are the makings of a true digital self, including the black box, which helps protect yourself from false claims, identity abuse, and compromised devices. And this is really magically simple. 
Of course, I could have shown you even more. We already have a module for Roundcube, the world's most popular open source webmail application, as well as the UI and UX for an integration into Nextcloud or OwnCloud. In parallel, we will continue to add the functionality to other browsers, providers, and clients. Participation and help with that is very welcome. If you want to know more about our plans and details, please go to varane.com and look at our user story and white paper. In fact, you will find them. One second, down here, white paper, user story. We are always looking for people to become part of our journey. A good way of doing that is to try out the prototype at appverain.com and join the conversation at communityverain.com as well as join our Telegram channel down here. You will find the links in the descriptions below. Thank you and talk to you soon.